time for the Malaguti F12 project, boys. We're getting a little bit into it today. I'm mostly just getting this thing ready to do a little bit of a motor build on it. I've decided what I'm going to do with it when I took the bug eye apart last time and now I have a spare Corsa. It's been a minute since we even mentioned the F12 scooter. I think the only video I even have on this scooter is the one when I first grabbed it. So, uh... A little backstory on it was this scooter was on offer up and it was literally listed under nothing other than just moped. And I found this thing and I saw the pipe on it. I didn't even really recognize what kind of scooter this was because the photos didn't show much detail at all on it. And I was amazed when I saw it and I went and checked it out and it was actually it was actually an older lady who had this scooter and she was like in love with it. And she knew all about it. She knew um, how rare they are and everything. She did not want to sell it but she fell and hurt herself and she needs surgery or something. So a few things on the last video because I mentioned how rare this scooter is. It's different when you're in America compared to other countries that have scooters that are actually produced and sold like this on a daily basis. Like, it is very uncommon to even be in America and really see scooters unless you live in a really, really compact city. No one really uses scooters and it's way more common to have cars here. Whereas in other countries, I think there's like difference in ages when you're allowed to drive certain things. Like you're only allowed to drive certain things at like 15 or 16 or 18. I've heard people message me and say like, I can't wait till I'm turning 18 and I can get a Zuma. And they say that Zumas are like, you have to be older to ride a Zuma. Obviously laws are way different in different countries. I've been to countries like Thailand and other parts of Asia where scooters are the most popular thing and you see them everywhere on the street. But besides that, in America it is actually even rare just to find a two-stroke scooter in general because we really didn't, we got a lot, but they were really in the older years. So more like scooters like this, the Honda Elite, which were like in the 90s and stuff like that. I'd say this bug eye Zuma right here and like a rough house and a few other random um, newer style scooters are the only ones that you're really going to find two-stroke. Obviously there's other ones that are like the Derby, the GP1, but those aren't that common. So even that Derby right there, that GP1 is really rare to find in America. And by rare, I mean like you're not going to see them just at the store. It's going to be maybe just a few people. It's going to be more the people who are in the scooter scene who know about the Derby. It's not like you're just going to see some random person riding a GP1 really. So that being said, the two stroke scooters are more like the enthusiast found stuff in America. Whereas in other countries you see them all day. So that makes this rare. Also, I have said it was super rare, limited option, that this was number 301 of possibly what, I, what I've read to be 500 of these is this exact replica sticker kit. And this is Carl Foghardy. And I'm probably Fogarty. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. But this is a replica of his bike. So here's his race bike, number one, which is the Foggy. And this is his bike right here. And I see this right here? This is a specific model, and that's what I mean by rare. I'm not talking about the F12. I've seen people in like Texas who have the F10s and the F12, and I know that yes, they're rare, but people have them. But this exact one, the Carl Foggy, the Ducati Corsa, the one that is literally based off Carl Foggy, right here, boys. That is what I mean by it's a super rare limited edition, one limited run. Because from, why, from what I understand, this number is literally on um, what number it is out of 500 that were made. I read on one post that 500 were made and only 50 of them were in America. Of this F12 with this sticker kit. It seems like I literally have to explain myself a million times to even get my point across to like two people when people watch these videos. Because everybody will still comment, get a runner, get an Aerox. Want to import one? You're paying $5,000. Is a runner? Aeroxes and the zip. If I could find any of those, I would. But dude, but you guys don't understand how hard they are to find. This is probably the rarest scooter I have. Then the GP1. Even Elites, dude. I haven't seen the Elite pop up for sale in in my city or my state within even in like three hours close to me. I haven't really seen one pop up for sale in the last few months. If we have any type of moped in America, it's 99% of the time going to be a Chinese Tao Tao four-stroke scooter. And that's like all you'll ever see. If you see a moped on the road, 99.9% .9 of the chance it's going to be a Chinese Tao Tao scooter. I try not to answer all the comments because it's just so repetitive of people saying to get Aeroxes or runners. I'm going to take this pipe off and probably just get a good look at this scooter right now because maybe I'll ride it and show you guys. But it's really bad right now with this loud ass pipe on it. I really haven't started this scooter in a long time. I don't even know if it'll start. I've not started this since like the day I got it. So bad. That is so bad. 
I literally don't even want to have that thing running. I changed my mind. I'm taking this exhaust off. So we don't even get to try this thing before we change it. But uh, I have a Yasuni pipe up here that I'm probably going to throw on for now. So I was going to put a crank and everything, but I kind of just want to throw the course on. And then we'll come back and do full build maybe on it. And do like crank, crank seals, possibly a different bore. Um, because I know course is probably not the most potential I can get out of this thing. Well, that one's foreign. That is a... I have never seen a scooter panels get removed the way this one does. It's the scariest thing ever. Not gonna lie. I just had to look it up to make sure I didn't break them while doing it. Damn, man. That's literally how you do that? Dude, that is so sketchy. Oh, oh I see why that's broken back there now. 100% I see why. Oh yeah, that is terrifying. I see why this panel is already broken then, because when you pull it apart like that, that is gnarly. You can take that off, that's this one. That might make it a little bit easier to put that panel on. But, dude, that is crazy. Look at the gas tank on this thing. It wraps all the way down the side. All right, I decided I'm gonna delete this fender and this oil reservoir, and uh, then I'm probably gonna soak it in some super clean and then power wash this thing off because it is just filthy and grummy and stuff. And then uh, also I'm gonna pull this pipe off right now. All right, about to power wash this thing off. Um, got the fender off, got everything off. It looks already a lot better. Um, but I'm probably gonna put the fender back on over the tire. I don't know, we'll see once we get together. That's, that's for later on. This thing is actually so mint, dude. Like right when I cleaned it up, I realized this thing is like pristine, bro. Alright boys, we're adding in some random work because there's just some stuff that have to get done around the garage. Uh, working on this pre-bug right now, I also gotta get a shipping situation for this motor. So I'm gonna show you guys how to ship a motor tonight. I'm also taking this pre-bug motor off because of the homie Aaron is buying this motor out of this thing. So I did some bolts today, about to drop the motor out of this thing right now. Take this wheel off. All right, we got the motor over there. I'm cleaning it off right now with some uh, degreaser, letting it soak in. The reason I'm parting this thing out and I'm not keeping it is because you can see right here how bad the bend in this frame is. It makes it where this thing is like completely vertical. I don't think it bent the fork tubes. It's really hard to tell, but I don't think so. So I'm gonna pull the forks off, I'm gonna keep those. But uh, yeah, as you can tell, this this whole tube of the frame is like, it's a bend. Like, sadly, when I bought this bike, I really didn't realize, and that makes sense on uh, kind of why it was taken apart when I went to go buy it and why it's all crushed in the front. So, um, this thing's toasted, and yeah, this I do have the wheels left to sell, and um, the forks checking out okay. The bars are looking bent. So here we got pre-bug frame stripped down to completely just the frame. So. I'm cleaning the motor up for my boy still, and I'm getting that thing nice and shiny. And I'm also packaging this motor right now. So my strategy was put a pillow at the bottom, saran wrap it, set it in there, and I'm gonna stuff a bunch of stuff around it and also saran wrap something over the top of it. I have not been posting much videos lately um, on scooters, mostly because I've just been so busy and like working on my car, and my car takes like four times as long. You could spend a whole night doing one thing on a car, whereas you could build a whole scooter in one video in like one night, so. That's snug. That spark plug's gotta come out. Spark plug's gotta come out for sure. So there we got the, the motor with the pillow, and then we got foam on the corners of it, because that's gonna be pressed up against the box. So the pillow, you know, covering up here. And then uh, got a kickstand there, that doesn't matter. And then we'll put stuff on top too. A whole cylinder with another bore in here that I have packaged in that one I'm about to wrap with saran wrap. Got 
all this stuff. Airbox, that's not even gonna fit in here, but I'm not even kidding. There's literally every seal you can imagine for a derby brand new in here. Like underneath here, these are all just OEM seals. All right, that's final product. Everything is wrapped. I got as much stuff as I can. I'm gonna slam this lid on. It's gonna be a tight, which is good. I mean, better than anything being able to bounce around. All right, got the Piaggio engine and like a million pieces and the uh, Yusuni exhaust for it and everything else, airbox, all that in that package. Now I got a pre-bug motor right here that I'm gonna be packaging up and shipping for the boy Aaron. So uh, this is next on the list. I wasn't even gonna put this in the video, but I just grabbed this today and uh, it won't be up for a while, but I thought I'd show you guys because I thought it was a pretty crazy come up. But this wheeling was such a good deal. We got a car lift. Yeah, it's old, it was stuck outside, but that's how it's gonna be at my house too, so I'm really not worried about it, as long as this thing works. And, uh, gnarly, bro. We gotta mount this thing to the concrete. Definitely gonna put a new hose on it. That's a dirty hose, all crusty. But, uh, dude. Look at the sweet trailer it came with, too. I saw that car lift pop up today on like the Facebook marketplace. I literally had three of my friends send it to me instantly because they know I've been looking for a car lift and that thing was like a super good deal. Even if some of the stuff is bad, like the line, it was still so cheap that if I can sell that trailer and get like four or five hundred bucks for it, the lift pretty much is free. So it was it was super worth it in my mind. The only thing now is I only laid a four inch slab of concrete back here and it's not reinforced with rebar. So it's literally just 4,500 PSI concrete. Um, slabs so I technically could mount it up but I wouldn't want to put anything on it more than like 3,000 pounds on the lift or I just talked to the concrete dude that did my stuff before and we can cut these slabs out and put like 8 inch thick ones and be golden to the point where I can put my truck on that lift if I wanted to so I'm kind of leaning more towards that route and just putting the lift up right the first time because it would kind of be dumb to go through all this work to mount it and then be like I can only put drift cars on it that are gutted you know what I'm saying so I've been trying to put out this video for a minute and I'm like over a week now I think without posting so I thought I'd just get these clips I didn't get too far on the Malaguti but I kind of want to stop at this point and see what you guys think I should do for motor build wise too so um, this video was pretty much just getting the initial start on it this is what we're going to be working on for the next few videos um, I got a video planned soon for this RC1 because I really haven't even gone and rode it yet because it's just been so cold a lot to come with the drift car there's been a lot of drift car content lately and I have a bunch more um, finished up a video on this right now so that's been mostly taking my time it's definitely more of a chiller video just kind of what little things been going on make sure you guys leave a thumbs up subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one